The skeletal system's main function is to provide support for the body. For example, the spinal column provides support for the head and torso. The legs, on the other hand, support and bear the weight of the upper body while a person stands. The human skeletal system consists of all bones, cartilage, tendons and ligaments in the body. Altogether, the skeletal makes up 20% of a person's body weight. My name is Selena and in this lesson you will cover the function, the structure and disorders of the skeletal system. An adult skeleton consists of 206 bones. Children's skeletons actually contain more bones because some of them, including those of the skull, fuse together as they grow up. There are also some differences in the male and female skeleton. The male skeleton is usually longer and has a high bone mass. The female skeleton, on the other hand, has a broader pelvis to accommodate for pregnancy and childbirth. The functions of bone is providing the body's framework, giving attachment to muscles and tendons, allowing movement of the body, protecting organs, production of blood cells and mineral storage. Regardless of age or sex, the skeletal system can be broken down into two parts known as the axle and the apodicular skeleton. The adult axial skeleton consists of 80 bones. It supports the head, neck and trunk, consists of the skull, the vertebral column, the ribs and the sternum. There are a total of 126 bones in the ampedicular skeletal and it supports the appendages of limbs and attaches them to the rest of the body. It consists of the shoulder griddle, the upper limbs, the pelvic griddle and the lower limbs. As already mentioned, the human skeleton has a number of functions such as protection and supporting weight. Different types of bones have differing shapes related to their particular function. Bones are highly vascular living structures that are constantly being remodeled. There are five different types of bones. Long bones, short, flat, irregular and sesamoid. Long bones are longer than they are wide including the femur, which is the longest bone in the body, as well as relatively small bones in the fingers. Long bones function to support the weight of the body and facilitate movement. Long bones are mostly located in the ampicular skeleton and include bones in the lower limbs, like the tibia, the fibula, the femur, the metatarsals and the phalanges and bones in the upper limbs like the humerus of the arm, the radius, the ulna, the metacarpals and the phalanges. Short bones are about as long as they are wide. Located in the wrist and ankle joints, short bones provide stability and some movement. They're strong and compact bones, usually grouped in parts of the body where little movement is required like the tarsals, the ankle bone and the carpals, the wrist bone. The function of flat bones is to protect internal organs such as the brain, heart and pelvic organs. Flat bones are somewhat flattened and can provide protection, like a shield. Flat bones can also provide large areas of attachment for muscles. An example of flat bones would be all areas in the skull, like your occipital, your frontal, your nasal, your vomer, and the breastbone, the pelvis, the sternum, and the ribs. Irregular bones vary in shape and structure, and therefore do not fit into any other category, like your flat, short, long, or sesamoid. They often have a fairly complex shape, which helps protect internal organs. For example, the vertebrae, which is the regular bones of the vertebral column, protect the spinal cord. The regular bones of the pelvis protect the organs in the pelvic cavity. Sesamum bones are bones embedded in tendons. These small, round bones are commonly found in tendons of the hands, knees and feet. Sesamum bones function to protect tendons from stress and wear. The plantella, commonly referred to as the kneecap, is an example of a sesamum bone, along with the hyoid bone, which is found at the base of the thumb. 
Bone tissue differs greatly from other tissues in the body. Bone is hard and many of its functions depend on the characteristic hardness. It's strong and durable type of connective tissue. It's made of osteoblasts and osteoclasts. Osteoblasts are large cells that dissolve the bone. They come from bone marrow and are related to white blood cells. Osteoblasts are the cells that form new bone. They also come from bone marrow and are related to structural cells. There are two types of bone tissue, compact and calcious. Compact bones function is in protection and support and is the external layer of all bones. Calcellus is light tissue, contains red bone marrow in white blood cells and platelets are produced, found in the hips, ribs, sternum, vertebrae, skull and ends of some long bones. Compact bones makes the shaft of long bone. It's hard, dense, compact tissue. Looks like a solid structure. Under microscope, it looks like a honeycomb full of holes. Has the passageways containing blood vessels, nerves, lymph, capillaries. Found on the outside of most bones and in shaft of long bones. The medullary cavity is the hollow part of the bone that contains bone marrow. The bone marrow makes blood cells and stores fat. The periosteum is a thin layer of connected tissue that covers the outer surface of a bone in all places except at joints. Cancellous bone is the meshwork of spongy tissue. It looks like a sponge found at the ends of long bones. The spaces contain red bone marrow. Spongy bone is lighter than compact bone, reducing the weight of the skeleton. Your skull provides structure to your head and face while also protecting your brain. The bones in your skull can be divided into cranial bones, which form your cranium, and facial bones, which make up your face. There are eight cranial bones, each with a unique shape. The occipital bone is considered a flat bone, like the other cranial bones, meaning that its primary function is to either for protection or to provide a broad surface for muscle attachment. It forms the back of the head and part of the base of the skull. The parietal bones form the sides and roof of the skull and top of the head. In front of each parietal bone adjoins the frontal bone, in the back the occipital bone and below the temple and spinoid bones. The frontal bone consists of two portions, making up the bony part of the forehead, part of the bony orbital cavity holding the eye and part of the bony part of the nose respectively. The temple bones are two major bones in the skull or cranium. They lie on each side of the head. They help form the sides and base of the skull where they protect the temporal lobe of the brain and surround the ear canal. The other major bones in the skull are the two parietal bones that make up the top of the skull and the zygomatic bone at the front and the occipital at the back. The ethmoid bone is an unpaired bone in the skull that separates the nasal cavity from the brain. It is located at the roof of the nose between the two orbits. The ethmoid bone is one of the bones that make up the orbit of the eye. It is a very delicate bone. The spinoid bone is a compound bone which forms the base of the cranium, behind the eye and below the front part of the brain. It has two parts of broad lateral wings and a number of other projections and contains two air-filled sinuses. Occupies the middle portion of the base of the skull and articulates with the occipital, temporal, parietal and frontal bones. The nasal bones are two small oblong bones, vary in size and form in different individuals. They are placed side by side at the middle and upper part of the face and by their junction, form the bridge of the upper one third of the nose. 
The zygomatic bone joins the bones of the face while protecting the arteries, nerves, veins and organs which lie below them. The arches of the zygomatic bone provide a person's cheeks with the structure to fill out the face and part of the floor of the lateral walls of the orbital cavities. The facial skeleton supports the soft tissues of the face. It consists of 14 bones and is fused to house the orbits. The maxilla has many functions. It provides critical bone structure to the skull and defines the face. For example, since it houses the upper teeth and forms a portion of the jaw, the maxilla is necessary for the process of mastication, which is chewing and speaking. Lacrimal bones are two small bones, lateral and posterior to the nasal bone. They are part of the lacrimal tear production system. The lacrimal system contains a lacrimal gland and produces tears and the nasolacrimal duct, which drains tears from the eye to the nose. Lacrimal bones provide structure for the orbital cavity and support the eye. The turbinate bone is a scroll shaped bone forms part of the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. They have three main functions. They warm the air, we breathe, humidify this air as it passes through the nose and the mucous layer of the turbinates assist in filtering particles such as dust and pollen. The turbinates, particularly the inferior, can block breathing when they are enlarged. The palatine bone is two small L-shaped bones. Primarily the palatine bone serves a structural function within its shape helping carve out important structures within the head and defining the lower wall of the inside of the cranium. This bone helps form the nasal and oral cavities, the roof of the mouth and lower portion of the eye socket. The mandible lower jaw or jaw bone is the largest, strongest and lowest bone in the human facial skeleton. It forms the lower jaw and holds the lower teeth in place. The mandible sits beneath the maxilla. It is the only movable bone in the skull. The vomer is a thin, flat bone. The vomer's main job is to help support the structure of the nasal passages and face. This bone, along with a band of nasal cartilage, skin and blood vessels, divides the nasal respiratory cavity in two. The clavicle, also known as the collar bone, is an S-shaped long bone, provides the only bone link between the upper limbs and the axial skeleton, articulates with the sternum and the scapula. The scapula or shoulder blade is a large triangular shaped bone that lies in the upper back. The bone is surrounded and supported by a complex system of muscles that work together to help you move your arm. The humerus is the arm bone between your shoulder and your elbow. The head forms the shoulder joint. The distal end has two surfaces that articulate with the radius and the ulna to form the elbow joint. The sternum is sometimes known as the breastbone. This flat bone sits at the front of the chest and connects with the ribs with cartilage. The sternum is part of the rib cage, a series of bones that protects the heart and lungs from injury. C1 through to C7 are the symbols for the cervical, the neck vertebrae, the upper seven vertebrae in the spinal column. These are the smallest vertebrae because they only have to support the head. The first vertebrae C1, the atlas, is the bone on which the skull rests. The axis C2 sits below the atlas. Together they create a pivot joint. Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease that can cause joint pain and damage throughout your body. The joint damage that RA causes usually happens on both sides of the body. So if a joint is affected in one of your arms or legs, the same joint in the other arm or leg will probably be affected too. 
osteoarthritis is the most common form of arthritis, affecting millions of people worldwide. It occurs when protective cartilage that cushions the ends of the bones wear down over time. Although osteoarthritis can damage any joint, the disorder most commonly affects joints in your hands, knees, feet and back. Osteoporosis is a health condition that weakens the bones, making them fragile and more likely to break, as caused by calcium deficiency or hormones. It develops slowly over several years and is often only diagnosed when a fall or sudden impact causes a bone to break or fracture. The most common injuries in people with osteoporosis are broken wrists. Gout is a common and complex form of arthritis that can affect anyone, caused by disposition of uric acid crystals within the joint capsules and cartilage. It's characterized by sudden severe attacks of pain, swelling, redness and tenderness in one or more joints, most often in the big toe. A slip disc is when a soft cushion of tissue between the bones of your spine pushes out. The weakening or tearing of one of the intervertebral discs. It's painful if it presses on nerves. It usually gets better slowly with rest, gentle exercise and painkillers. Let's review. The skeletal system's main function is to provide support for the body. For example, the spinal column provides support for the head and torso. The legs, on the other hand, support and bear the weight of the upper body while a person stands. But the skeletal system has several additional functions, including protecting internal organs from injury. For example, the skull protects the brain while the thoracic cage protects the heart and lungs. Allowing for movement, muscles attached to bones through tendons. This connection allows the body to move in many different ways. Producing blood cells. The soft bone marrow inside of many bones produces red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. Storing minerals and nutrients. Bones can store and release minerals, including calcium and phosphorus, which are important for many bodily functions. Additionally, adipose fat tissue can be used as energy and can be found in part of the bone marrow. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson and now have a fuller understanding of the skeletal system.